Do you know the difference between the Dependent Care FSA and the Dependent Care Tax Credit? Here to speak with me about that is Danielle Harrison from Harrison Financial Planning. Danielle, welcome. Thank you for having me. So I know you wrote an article about this for Retirement Daily. Can you walk me through that? So for many young parents, childcare can be their biggest monthly expense. So finding ways to cut those costs can be very advantageous. There are a couple of different ways to save on taxes when paying for child care expenses. One is either through a dependent care flexible spending account or dependent care FSA or a dependent care tax credit. Dependent care FSAs are offered by many employers and allow you to make pre-tax contributions that you can use to then pay for qualified child care expenses. The funds contributed to the account aren't subject to federal and state income taxes or Social Security and Medicare withholdings. The dependent care tax credit can be utilized at the time that you file your tax return. I like to think of the dependent care FSA contribution as being more proactive because you have to choose those um, prior to the expenses. So typically that's done during annual enro enrollment for your employer benefits. And like a healthcare FSA, the contributions are use it or lose it. Typically not a problem because historically um, the cost of childcare hasn't been anywhere close to the, the contributions that you can make. And then the dependent care tax credit is utilized after the expenses have been occurred. And then you, you file for those with your taxes. Okay. So following the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 that was passed in March of this year, there were several changes to both of those options for the 2021 tax year. For the dependent care FSA, the maximum contribution went from $5,000 a year for individuals and those married filing jointly up to 10,500. The dependent care tax credit also saw a very large increase in the benefit from the maximum tax credit of 1,050 for one child and 2,100 for two and up, up to $4,000 for one child and 8,000 for two or more. So a very big difference. Yeah. The act was also changed the eligibility parameters around the dependent care tax credit. So in past years, most families with over about 43,000 in adjusted gross income were better off fully taking advantage of a dependent care FSA rather than a tax credit but for 2021, not only was the maximum percentage of eligible child care expenses increased from 35 to 50 percent, but now those with an adjusted gross income of up to 125,000 get to enjoy the entire 50 percent versus 2020, when that maximum benefit of 35 percent, that began declining at just 15,000 in adjusted gross income. Um, a couple, one other change, um, the tax credits are also non-refundable, are now refundable, and they weren't in previous years. So even if taxpayers um, don't have an offsetting tax liability, they can get a refund um, for those dependent care tax credits. And all of this was done through the American Rescue Plan Act, um, which again, I said, started in March. So um, the plans that parents had in place at the beginning of the year may not now be their optimal solution. So it's good to really reevaluate. So when parents are reevaluating, what sort of things do they need to consider when they're choosing between the dependent care FSA versus the dependent care tax credit? So the first step is to ensure your child care expenses qualify. So it's limited to child care expenses incurred prior to your child um, becoming the age of 13, um, unless they meet some other criteria, such as, as being disabled. The expenses paid also um, need to be uh, completed by certain uh, care providers. So for instance, if you have a sibling under the age of 19, that doesn't qualify. There are also different childcare expenses that don't qualify, such as overnight camps or a private education from kindergarten and up. 
Then there are some work and income related tests for both of these options. Um, first, you must pass the work related expense test. And that means that either you and your spouse have to be working or be looking for work. And that's why you're paying for the expenses. And then unless your spouse or you are a student that meets some, some uh, different criteria, uh, you must have in earned income within the year that equals or is greater than the amount of the childcare expenses that you claim. So an example of this could be um, someone starting a business. You've got lots of expenses that first year. You may, be not, you may not show any uh, earned income um, or maybe $5,000. For that person showing $5,000 in earned income, they could have $20,000 in childcare expenses, but they're only able to um, look at that $5,000 amount, so you're limited. And then the third step is to make sure you're qualified for both of those options. So not every employer offers a dependent care FSA. And then not all employers who offer a dependent care FSA um, have the increased limit of 10,500. So even though the federal government passed the law that allowed for the limit to be increased, that was up to the discretion of the employer whether they wanted to offer that. And I know lots of different employers because of ad administrative costs who didn't, in, uh, didn't increase their limits for their employees. And then if you're married filing separately, in most instances, you don't qualify for the dependent care tax credit. So really your only option is the dependent care FSA. Now, can you only do one of the two? Can you only do the dependent care FSA or the dependent care tax credit? That's a great question. Um, you can actually, it's not an either or decision. You can do both. And this is very important, especially in this tax year where the laws changed. So uh, people may get to the end of the year or um, next year when they're filing their taxes and realize, oh man, I, I really should have taken advantage of the dependent care uh, tax credit. Well, you can do both. You just can't double dip. So um, if you have $5,000 in childcare expenses, you can't use $5,000 from your dependent care FSA and $5,000 for the tax credit. You can split those up. You just can't um, really double dip. Um, and this is important because um, you can uh, see what options are best for you. And sometimes it's a combination of both. What are some of the next steps people should take? So a couple of next steps that you can also take um, to have additional um, detail on the both the dependent care FSA and the dependent care tax credit, you can read the full article at the street. Um, within that article, there is also a link to a calculator that Harrison Financial Planning created to be able to um, see which one would be better for you or both options. Awesome. Um, that's a really good tool for our readers when they're trying to figure out how they're going to subsidize their child care. You've said a lot of really good information that I'm sure is going to help our readers. Is there anything we need to discuss about the dependent care FSA and the dependent care tax credit that we didn't already talk about? Um, I do want to emphasize that this is only for the tax year 2021. Um, the law has not um, been extended for 2022. So it reverts back to the old numbers. So um, take advantage of, of it while you can for this year. Danielle, that was some really great pieces of information. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and speak with me. Thank you very much.